Okay, well, thank you. So um, let me uh, get my presentation started. And we will get wrong. Uh oh. You listen to the talk nice and loudly. Yeah. Should be fine. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Okay, well, uh, this is actually going to be a little bit uh, screwed up because my um, uh, screen resolution is different than I did my, my slide presentation for. But anyway, my, I'm Walter Bender. I'm from Sugar Labs, and Sugar Labs is the sort of the upstream project uh, for the Sugar Learning platform, which is used on uh, the one laptop per child computer, but it's also available for pretty much any distribution now. If it runs Linux, it can run Sugar. And um, so I'm going to tell you about wh what we did, why we did it, and how you can get involved. Um, this is a, a, a dog food presentation. Uh, I wrote this presentation tool in Sugar uh, during the first few days I got here to Colbert. Um, and uh, so bear with me. It's, it's brand new software. It's pretty buggy. But uh, you'll get, get a little bit of an idea of uh, the power of sugar, I think, from, from this. Um, the goal, the, the overall goal of what we're trying to do as a community is to give every child an opportunity uh, for learning how to learn. And uh, the means to that goal is a free, free software platform that's all about exploring, expressing, and reflecting because we think that, that that's key to learning to learn. Um, there are two places where I'm pretty particular about free software, uh, where unequivocally uh, free software is important. One of them is voting machines, and the other is learning. Now, I'll argue about a lot of other places as well, but those two places, I, I, I draw a line in the sand for sure. And uh, this is a, a learning project, therefore it's got to be free. Um, we're really, um, you know, grounding this work in, in about 40 years of, of research at M MIT and other places. Uh, this is Seymour Papert in Senegal in 1983. Uh, we did a one-to-one -one computing program there. Learned a lot about learning, learned a lot about how computation's a thing to think with, but we didn't learn a lot about scale. We didn't know how to get beyond doing a pilot project. And the, the project that I was involved in, in uh, you know, for the last two years before I started Sugar Labs was a, a program called One Laptop Per Child, which was all about scale. It was all about how do we take these ideas and reach every child. Um, this is uh, Thailand from last year uh, with the OLPC computer. They're using Sugar uh, in the field to uh, explore their world and, and, and collaborate and, and work with it. Um, on, on the, uh, the right-hand side of my slide are, are the pedagogical foundations of what we're trying to do with sugar. And the question I'm asking is, you know, it, it's great. We can give every child, every person um, access to knowledge. We can give them a, 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 an iPod that also can let them read the Wikipedia, for example. Um, and that's great. But I think we also want to give them synthesizers. We want to give them the opportunity to be creative, to be expressive, to appropriate media, to make things. So the Wikipedia is not nearly as interesting if all you can do is read it. Um, so a lot of the ideas behind Sugar are, are going from a consumer model of learning to a creator or expressive model of learning. So uh, this is uh, from uh, Michael Barber's The Learning Game. And uh, you know, very typical interaction, unfortunately, in our schools. Uh, what are you doing? I'm thinking fine, but get back to working. 
uh, the, the, the thinking isn't, isn't considered part of the working, part of the learning. Um, and again, I should, you know what I'm going to do? I should, uh, well, yeah, why not? I'm going to just edit my uh, presentation for a second here. My progress bar is trashing my slides, and my progress bar is here. Let's just make that be maybe about 300 or so. Okay. So we'll hide that again, and we can keep going. What I, what I want you to do is I want you to think about a great learning moment in your life. And, and I'll, I'll guarantee that great learning moment in your life wasn't listening to someone like me lecture at you. The great learning moment in your life was when you were solving a problem that you were passionate about. It was when you were doing something and you were drawing upon all these resources, including other people, to try to you know, get to the heart of the problem. Debugging is when you're learning, not reading a manual, not listening to lecture. So the, the idea that we can you know, give, give this kind of, of discovery, exploration, debugging, reflecting experience to children as part of their learning experience is really key to what we're trying to do. Um, one of the reasons why free software is important is because free software has both a culture of sharing and also a culture of critique. And engaging in that critical dialogue, show me the code, that kind of attitude, that kind of in-your-face attitude is fundamental to learning. So again, more conventional wisdom is that, that teachers tell students, listen, knowledge is a collection of objects. And what we want to do is we want to gather as many of those objects as we can to become educated. The unconventional wisdom is that every one of us is both a teacher and a learner. It's built into our DNA. It's part of what makes us be human. And knowing is doing. And to be educated is to have appropriated knowledge, to have actually put it to use. Marvin Minsky likes to say you don't know anything unless you know it more than one way. To really be able to take ideas and, 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 and own them, use them. It's appropriate to appropriate ideas. That's how you learn. That's why learning has to be free. So to ask is to create. With, with Sugar Labs, the, the, you know, we looked at a lot of different models in terms of how do you governance models and membership models and the like. Asking a question is a barrier to entry. So you ask a question, you're in. So if you ask how do I join the community, you're in because you've asked a question. Get it? You know, anybody who sort of wants to be involved in, in asking questions and, and, and uh, problem solving wants to be a learner, they're part of our community. So three axioms, and then I'll get into sugar itself. The, the first is that information is a noun, learning's a verb. Second is we learn through doing. So if we want more learning, we want more doing. And sugar is all about facilitating more doing. And then finally, love is a better master than duty. And so um, you, 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 the wonderful thing about computers as, as a tool as part of a learning process is they don't care what the subject matter is. But they're going to give you all these facilities to, to explore that subject matter no matter what it is. And uh, you do more about more with things that you love. So a little bit about Sugar and Sugar Labs. Uh, Sugar is a member project in the Software Freedom Conservancy. So if you go to the FFC page, you'll see us listed with other things like uh, um, uh, I, I think uh, Inkscape is there. I don't know. There, there are you know, probably uh, 25 projects or so. And also Sugar. Uh, most of Sugar is GPL v2. There's a little bit of GPLv3 creeping in, and then the, the contributors are, are free to choose whatever uh, floss license they, they, they care to. But most of it's uh, GPLv2. Um, so sugar is um, about uh, simplicity. It's about collaboration. It's about reflection. We want to make sugar be really 
easy to access, but at the same time, we don't want to put any bound upper limit on how high you can climb on, on complexity. So a lot of the ideas behind sugar are to sort of draw someone into a learning experience and then let them climb a mountain. I like to contrast the goal of simplicity with the goal of learning. Uh, Bill Buxton, who's a, um, a HCI guy in Toronto, uh, once talked about Buxton's law, where he described the world as, as increasing in complexity exponentially. And the people were in a flat line. People weren't increasing in their complexity. So there's this growing gap between the complexity of the world and people. And the role of HCI, the role of interface design, is to bring complexity down to be within reach of people. And I say he's wrong. And the reason why he's wrong is that people learn. And the goal shouldn't be to reduce the complexity of the world. The goal should be to give people the affordances, the learning affordances, so they can reach that complexity. I don't know how many of you are wine drinkers, but when you choose a bottle of wine, you're not seeking a simple wine. You want a com complex wine. The richness of our lives comes from complexity. And so we want to give, have the staging, the scaffolding to reach the complexity. That's the goal. And let me give an example of that. This is uh, the music program that comes bundled with Sugar by Default. It's written by Jean Pichet and his students at the uh, University of Montreal. It's called Tam Tam. And in, uh, on the upper left, upper left, you see Tam Tam Mini. Tam Tam Mini is just a, it's a busy box. You click on an instrument, the keyboard becomes that instrument, you pound away. And literally, a two-year-old can access that. A two-year-old can use that and, and make music. I've got a friend in Brazil who can make beautiful music with Tam Tam. But, um, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's accessible to anybody. Wow. Um, up and right is Tam Tam Jam, because you outgrow Tam Tam. And what you want to do is you want to have the ability to um, have multiple voices on the screen at once, synchronize with other laptops, with other people, and, and, and play music as, as a sort of garage band type experience. From there, some kids will go to Tam Tam Edit, lower left. Tam Tam Edit's a sequencer. You start to script, you write music. And then some kids are not going to be satisfied with the 100 instruments we ship with, with Sugar Bundled or the 6,000 in instruments on the website. They're going to want more. So we give them a synthesizer lab so they can design their own instruments. And then there's more, because then some kids are going to say, well, wait a second. How does this all work under the hood? Well, under the hood, in the case of Tam Tam, there are two scripting languages. The interface is written in Python, and the music is written in C sound. So they can either hack the Python code, or they can hack the C sound code, or both. So they go from something that's simple and approachable by a two-year-old, literally to using the same tools that pros use, all within the same environment, all within the same learning experience. Not, not every child's going to climb that mountain, but that mountain's available to climb in every domain. This is uh, Turtle Art, and Turtle Art's actually the program that I modified to do the presentation in. Um, Turtle Art is a very simple sort of um, subset of the logo language. It's, it's done with little bricks and, and uh, things. I can show you actually, you know, you, you drag bricks off the side and, uh, and, and you can make, uh, make creations. The, um, idea behind turtle art is, you know, the, the, in the upper left, you can't read it in the slide, but there's a simple program to draw a star. That was done by a third grader. Um, it, it, it gets kids started. There's a slightly more sophisticated program on the upper right to draw this, this really colorful thing. Turtle art has a limited syntax. There's only so much you can do with it. So what I did was I said, okay, it's, it's not the end goal, it's the beginning. So from Turtle Art, you can export Berkeley logo and go into a Berkeley logo environment inside of Sugar. So that's what you see on the lower left is the same Turtle Art program on the upper right that's done with these graphics snapped together bricks exported as real logo. So the kids can, again, start to climb a mountain. And then the other thing that we've done with, with, with Turtle Art is we're pretty adamant that, that computing is part of life and life is part of computing that it's not these two separate things. So we've put a big emphasis on things like having um, available a, um, 
a, a, a way to grab sensor data into your programming. So I extended Turtle Art with a, 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 an intern, Arjun Sarwal, to add things like access to the microphone, access to uh, 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 data ports. So you see pictured here, this is a, a, in Curitiba, Brazil. Um, there's a popular game there called Dance Dance Revolution. The kids like to play it, but in this case, they can not just play Dance Dance Revolution, they can make their own Dance Dance Revolution machine. So the idea that they can, again, not just treat computation as a black box, but really be part of it, be inside it. Um, so one of the things that's foundational inside of Sugar is this notion of view source. And what we tried to do was take a lesson from the automotive industry, of all the industries to be emulating these days. But uh, the automotive industry used to make really rigid cars, really strong, rigid cars, and it, they'd hit something and nothing would happen to the car. And the problem was that all the impact would, uh, you know, the energy from the impact would, uh, you know, come inside and, and, and destroy the driver of the car or the passenger of the car. Then they discovered something called crumple zones. And a crumple zone is, is you know, basically what's going to happen is that the, um, you know, the, the bumper will absorb all the impact in the crumple, crumple zone and the, the energy from the impact won't, won't disturb the, uh, the, the, the passenger or the, the driver. So it makes driving safer. Well, what we tried to do with sugar, uh, with varying degrees of success, and you're going to help us do it better, but what we tried to do with sugar was to say, rather than try to build something that's super rigid, super hardened, we decided to make it really easy to recover. So we wanted to encourage kids to experiment, change things, break things, but we didn't want to make the penalty of breaking things high. We wanted the penalty of breaking things really, really low. So they would. Uh, so it's really easy to just reimage, to recover, restore things. But it's also really easy to fork your projects with inside of Sugar and and and, and explore and, and do things. So one of the things I, I added actually a key on the OPC keyboard, and it's a virtual key that you can bind on on when you don't have this particular hardware, and it's a view source key. So you type view source. Yep, good thing they make those things strong. Um, when you have view source, um, when you hit view source, you'll um, by default just pop into a Python editor and be able to edit the Python code that made the program you're you're running. If you hit view source inside of Turtle Art, you get into Berkeley logo. Or if you hit view source and start in, inside of this program, my presentation program, what it does is it exports HTML, so you have an HTML version of the presentation as well. Um, so the idea of, of this layering and letting kids sort of peel away the, the, the onion. So you see um, down here is view source for one of the programs inside the Python editor. The other thing is that we really want, we designed Sugar to be easily modifiable. So we have a Sugar manual, we use the Flask manual system to write a manual for Sugar. And there's a chapter in the Flask manual on modifying Sugar. So the idea is, you know, so when, when we first did the Debian port of Sugar, I decided in honor of Debian to make the home page be a Debian spiral instead of uh, um, a, a circle. You know, so you just play around with stuff like that just because you can. And again, the idea to make it really easy to get in and change things and muck around and, and debug and break things, that's where the learning happens. Now about collaboration, one of the things we did with, with um, Sugar is we said, well, you know, there's all this great collaboration that happens out on the internet. And the problem is that in, in many situations, um, particularly many school situations, the internet's not available. So very, in, even in the United States where they have internet at the schools, very few schools let internet access into the classroom. So what we wanted to do is take a lot of the collaborative types of experiences you have out there and bring them directly into the user experience. So make it be a first order thing you do right on the desktop as opposed to requiring to go out to a server somewhere. So uh, we have this notion of your, your neighborhood. And you know, my neighborhood right now, I'm seeing all these other XOs and their chats going on. There's all sorts of stuff happening right now um, while I'm giving my talk. But, um, and what I can do is with, you know, I could go to, through the web browser, I could go to Google Apps and do a collaborative document. But with Sugar, I'm always just one mouse click away from inviting someone to do peer editing with me and having somebody else in my document writing with me. 
or I can invite someone to play a game with me, or with a record app activity I can um, have a Flickr-like experience only directly. While I'm taking pictures, they're showing up on my collaborator screens in real time, vice versa. And all that stuff is happening um, using um, actually two different protocols that you can swap back and forth between dynamically or semi-dynamically. The collaborator guys are talking about that in more detail later this week. But it's um, essentially letting you um, um, collaborate both through an inter infrastructure mode connected to an eJabber server or through an ad hoc mode collaborating directly and locally. And uh, so the idea that, that collaboration, engaging in sort of the social nature, the expressive nature of learning with other people, engaging in that critical dialogue is, is uh, something we, again, support in Sugar directly. Um, another core piece of Sugar is this thing called the journal. And what the journal is, is it's essentially a record of everything you do. Uh, every time you run a program, it makes a journal entry. And in that journal entry, you're also able to add descriptions, add keywords, and, and it generates little preview thumbnails. So these images that you're seeing right here are from my journal, from uh, the preview. And if I go to the journal, you'll see that the, uh, the journal um, so I can, I can search for the journal, so I can search for, uh, I'm going to search for, uh, for Marvin Minsky, because ha Marvin Minsky happens to be the person that, that was quoted in this slide. And what my presentation tool does, a tool I'm showing you right now for my talk, all it does is it allow, it's a portfolio tool. It allows the, the, the learner to go through their journal, through this diary, select things they think are important, and then tell a story about what they learned. So it's a different approach to assessment. It's an approach to assessment about um, um, you know, what a child knows, why they know it. Um, and and um, let me just uh, switch back. So the idea behind the journal is it, it's simply um, um, it, it's not so much that we wanted to replace the file system. I don't, don't really care about the file system one way or another, file hierarchies. What we wanted to do was make something that was um, reflective of the learning needs. And the learning needs are, you know, again, to be able to go back to things, to, um, you know, compare, contrast, to um, annotate things. What did I do? Why did I do it? Uh, the journal has those kinds of affordances. It's a different set of needs than the needs of a file system. Um, just a little bit more about, about Sugar. Sugar um, is deployed and in, is in the hands of about uh, three quarters of a million kids right now. And uh, we're just beginning to get um, from the field some studies of, of how well it's working. And uh, this is some preliminary data from Peru, one of the pilots. Peru is uh, putting sugar in the hands of kids in rural schools. 95% of the schools don't have internet access, but the kids are collaborating with each other using sugar. Uh, this is just one snap snapshot of the progress that the students have made measured against the, the national, the Peruvian national uh, tests. One of my favorite um, statistics that's come from their study, though, um, and I, I, should, I don't have a slide of it, is um, they measured, uh, I don't know exactly how it translates from the Spanish, but I, I refer to it as tension. How tense, how anxious are the kids about school? And since they started using sugar, they're much more anxious. They're, 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 they're very anxious. They're very, and I see that actually as a very positive result because there's a certain pain associated with the pleasure of learning, the pleasure of discovery. They actually care. It, school actually means something to them now, so they're concerned about it. Before, it was like, who cares? No reason to be tense because it doesn't matter. It's not relevant to my life. It's not relevant to my learning. So sugar is making learning meaningful to these kids. I want to talk a little bit about Sugar Lab or Sugar Labs, which is sort of the umbrella foundation under which the sugar development is happening. Um, again, a little bit of history was that uh, we, we originally developed sugar uh, working very closely, uh, particularly with Red Hat, 
um, at, when I was at One Laptop Per Child. Last spring, it became pretty clear to me that One Laptop Per Child, while I, I applaud their mission, is, is, is in a very narrow place. And that last year, there were 8 million netbooks produced. One Laptop Per Child produced about 12% uh, uh, of those netbooks. And so I wanted to have sugar be available to every child. So we started working with uh, the, the upstream Linux distributions uh, in, a, in a variety of different ways. Uh, and um, the idea is to make sugar be available whether or not you have access to one of these things. And uh, so Sugar Labs is, is really sort of the um, place where the community goals are set for the further development of sugar. Um, the means to reach those goals is out in the community, though. It really is. I mean, it, it's a completely decentralized organization. We're, um, you know, they're, they're probably right now on sugar itself, they're probably about 20 very active, as in like every day, 24-7 in, uh, in the IRC channels, etc., uh, contributors. But the community itself is about 2,000 people right now. Sugar Labs has a budget of exactly zero. Um, and uh, so in some sense, we're, we're sort of recession proof. The fact that we didn't have any money, that was okay, um, because there isn't any money to be had right now. Um, so it's really, it's really a, it's a community project. The community owns a project. Um, and one of the things that we're pushing is the idea of really sort of establishing local or regional um, areas of expertise around sugar to be able to sort of tailor to local needs uh, and then again uh, contribute back. So sugar, um, we recently moved over to Gatorius and Gatorius is a little bit more accessible I think just because it's got a really friendly web interface and it also makes it really, really easy for anybody to fork or anybody to start a project. You don't have to ask permission. You go in there and you do it. So um, we're really uh, hoping that that kind of change is going to make it easier for the community to, uh, to broaden, to expand. Um, some of what we're doing, again, is we're, we're um, working with different distributions. We're working with different hardware manufacturers. Uh, in the slide on the left, you see Sugar Run in our ThinkPad, on an Acer, and on an OPC, all collaborating with each other all playing a, a, a game over the network, over the same network. Uh, on the upper right is, uh, is a relatively new project. We call it Sugar on a Stick. And we've been working with the Fedora guys and with, and with the uh, Ubuntu guys on making live USB key versions of Sugar. And the idea there is that a lot of, in a lot of schools, uh, in most schools, in um, just about every school, teachers aren't allowed to load software. The IT departments have a lock hold on the stuff because they don't want you know they don't want stuff to break. So the only way we're going to get in is either top down, and uh, you know I, I don't want to be in the the, the the selling F16 business. I, I want to or through a grassroots effort bottom up, and sugar on a stick means that a teacher or a child or a classroom full of kids can go and start to use sugar on the school's infrastructure without changing anything. You don't need permission from the IT guy. So the idea that you, if you've got a computer, you can stick a USB key in, whether it's a school computer, the library computer, your parents' computer, um, a, a computer at an internet cafe, you're using sugar. And it also brings the price point down to the cost of a USB key. And a, you know, we recommend probably a, a, a two gig key, but a one gig key works fine. Um, other, other types of outreach, again, I mentioned earlier, FLAS manuals. So uh, we're, we're pushing all the sugar documentation out to the FLAS manual project. Um, so I want to make sort of a, um, a, a not, well, not quite a philosophical and not quite a mathematical point, but I, I, I call this interlude induction, sort of based on the notion of mathematical induction. If you have 1 and you have n plus 1 if you have n, you've got an inductive proof. And what I'm going to argue is that sugar is one in the sense that, you know, my, my, my friends uh, at Xerox back in the 1970s invented the desktop metaphor. And who did they invent it for? They in invented it for 1970-style office workers. Well, children learning 
aren't 1970s style office workers. So what we did with Sugar Group, we said, you know what? We're going to do something different. We're going to try to really look at the needs of this problem, children learning, and design something for them. And the wonderful thing is that the Lewis community has built such a rich collection of tools that we could do it. So we could make sugar. No, and sugar's got its flaws, and sugar needs your support to make it better. But nonetheless, sugar works. We did it. We made something new and something different that is working in the field for this particular audience. And my point is that there are other domains, just like the domain of learning, where I think you're going to be able to, you're going to start to see that people aren't going to just say, let me customize the desktop, but they're going to just say, wait a second, we can do like those sugar guys did, we can build something new. The threshold's not so high anymore. And the Linux community should be applauded for building such a great set of tools that we can begin to do that. So you know, I, I didn't fill my slide full of uh, you know, pictures of, of little kids smiling with computers. Um, but I do think we are in, an, in, in a threshold, a, a time of change. And I think that uh, the, the riskiest path is the status quo. There are a lot of failed programs putting technology into schools. Because there are a lot of people that haven't made the transition of thinking from 1970s office workers to what we all know computing is really all about. Again, the power of computing is that it, it, it allows us to learn to learn. It allows us to take the things we're passionate about and, and, and debug and engage in, in deep investigation. And again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're a kernel hacker or you're hacking something on, on the desktop or, or whatever it is, or it doesn't matter whether you're interested in music or the arts or writing or sports. The, 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 the idea that you take the culture, the, the culture of sharing and the culture of critique and embody those in the tools that you give children, that's the power, that's the change. And that's the end. Thank you. So let me just finish fixing my, uh, let's see if this fixed it. Actually, these guys are all off. The, there's uh, these. Let's just see what happens. Get my money. That's a little bit better. You can see my, uh, my little footer <laughs> for my slides that was missing. Um, you know, actually, the, what I should do is I can write a little program. Well, not write a little program, but I can, I'm going to just um, investigate. All right, so we'll, we'll just do a little debugging live, right? So I'm going to bring my uh, turtle right here and just print the Y coordinate. So, okay. So that tells me where I want it. Cool. So that works. I'm going to bring this guy up, and we'll just get rid of this little tile. We don't need him anymore. And we'll hit our little rabbit again. Yeah, so. <laughs> Should have done that before. So I mean, part of what I tried to do with this is, is make you know, the kids need a portfolio. They need a way to present, to, to expose the things they're learning and engage again in, in, a, in a dialogue with other people. And you can run open office inside of Sugar. I mean, you can run anything inside of Sugar. But I, I wanted the kids not just to run open office, but to sort of, again, feel like they could understand how these tools work. So you know, if we want to make a slide, we just grab a slide. That's a new slide. And I can grab it, something out of my, I can write a title for it. Um, and, uh, and then I can. Uh, Go into my journal, and let's find, uh, oh, so here's the, the Dance Dance Revolution picture. Uh, actually, let's find something more fun. Um, we'll make another slide. And we'll search for, uh, I got a nice picture of hats here. Okay, and we'll just erase the screen, and we'll look at this slide. I'll hide all the junk. 
So that's how, that, you know, that, that's how hard it is to uh, make a slide from your journal. And then the idea is that then you can start to program it. So you, you know, you saw the, I have this, all this stuff over on the side. This stack here is my slide decoration. So it's, and again, it's a simple, I, 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 wrote, you, I don't know if you noticed the little progress bar as I was going through my talk. That was, that's the, the um, thing down here. The, the bottom half of my decoration is the progress bar. Um, the top half is just, you know, putting my, uh, foot, my slide footer up. And then over here, this is a little program I wrote. This little stack is my slide transition stack. But I did it right, in this case, what I did was I, I, I read the input from the keyboard, and if there's actually a character there, I exit the stack, otherwise I just loop. But we could do something, um, we can change this. In fact, let's change it and see if this is, uh, we're gonna have a little fun here. Get rid of that. And what I want now is a drop in uh, volume. So now my slide transition is based on uh, uh, volume. Okay, so let's just see if this works. Hello? Hey. All right. So, um, so I mean, basically, again, the, the idea is get them to engage in, 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 in doing things. And, uh, maybe we'll stop it. Um, hang on. So, uh, actually, the other thing is I need to uh, export my presentation for the uh, conference. So, I'm writing it out as HTML right now. Uh, I haven't, I, actually, Mel's going to do work on the style sheet for me, but it's kind of crummy HTML. But, and if I, uh, actually, if I leave, uh, let's do this. I'll exit sugar. Um, So I'm just running it. What, what we did is um, you can run sugar. Uh, you can use sugar both um, as as a um, in, in instead of the desktop, um, or you can use sugar as um, you know. So I can log in and, and just have sugar. Sugar is one of my session choices when I log in on Ubuntu or on Fedora. Yeah. Or, or you can run sugar inside of an emulator on top of your Windows system, which is what I'm doing right now. So um, if I, um, just going to do one thing and then we'll, we'll take questions. Or we can even uh, start taking questions now. But if I come over here and come over here and reload this, this is my presentation exported into HTML. Again, not very beautiful HTML. You see the whole thing there. So again, part of the idea is you want the kids to be able to share outside of the context of sugar as well. Yeah, question? Um, we received one of the whole PCs for Christmas and then uh, had a couple of people over the Christmas vacation. We kind of left the machine out that had people play around with it. And it turned out we had a, at some point in time a vigorous discussion. And I'd be interested um, to hear how you would have um, participated in that discussion. I'll be the devil's advocate of the question basically, have we actually asked the kids whether they want to be engaged in technology in this way? Um, have we asked the kids? Like, are, are okay. We, it's a sort of... What research have you done? It, 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 it's sort of a question, like, are, are we sure, like, we're in the sort of, like, Western world, or, like, developed countries, are we sure that we're doing the right thing um, by pushing out this technology to everyone? Is this the right, I mean, you know. When, when you say this technology, you're speaking about sugar, are you speaking about sugar specifically when you ask, or are you talking about giving kids computers? I think in general, it was giving kids computers, not sugar. Okay, well. Maybe this is not. No, but I mean, that, but, all right. You know, bottom line is that everyone in this room knows that computation is a wonderful thing to think with. That's how you do most of your thinking. And that's how you do most of your learning. And if you think about is, is, is education knowledge work? Do you know a knowledge worker outside of education that doesn't use computing? It's just a, a, a you know, it's a, it's a wonderfully efficient tool. On the other hand, what we're trying to do with sugar is not teach kids how to use computers. We're trying to give them tools to let them engage in learning. 
Now, sugar, the, the, the pedagogy behind what we're doing is based on, um, at MIT, 40 years of research, but um, you know, m many, many hundreds of years of research um, but before that, this is, we didn't invent a lot of new pedagogy with sugar. What we're doing is we're embodying it and making it accessible and available. Um, we've been doing lots of studies um, on, on these various individual components and also aggregated as, as what, what the whole thing, the whole experience is all about. And it works and we should be doing it and we should be giving kids access to this. It's not, you know, learning's not learning how to use word. Learning's how to debug your presentation. That's when the learning happens. Every child, every human, part of our nature, and this is why it's global, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you speak English, or whether you speak Urdu, every one of us is a learner and a teacher, every one of us is social, every one of us is expressive. Those are the foundations we have to build upon. Absolutely, this is the right thing to be doing. And it's gotta be free, because every one of us has to have the opportunity to look inside, to change things, to make our own mistakes, to build our own models our own representations of ourselves. Nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the other thing is that it's not being pushed on communities. Communities are being introduced, like, you know, teachers and they have a lot of being introduced to it. And, um, and then they're the ones deciding to attract the day. You know, I'm not going to know what's right for a child in the island. If that community wants to engage to do this, they are very much responsible for the community running. And so for these local groups in all the different countries doing this, figure out what's right for the community. Let's time out for you. Let's let's do more questions and then we can do a discussion out, outside after. But let me just get to questions first. Yeah, but in the back, way back first. Yeah. What, I'm, I, what was this question again that I didn't answer? I thought I thought he asked, should we be doing this? I, I, isn't that what you asked? I mean, I can, I can give you, you know, you know, read Vygotsky, read Piaget, read Paulo Freire, read Papert, um, you know, the, the, we, we read Minsky. Marvin just published another essay uh, on the OPC website that's just that's brilliant about learning. We, we, Okay, well, you know, again, you know, have we tested uh, all aspects of sugar, you know, in, 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 um, well, it, Right. No. There, you know. It, it, you know. We're, we're uh, about to have. Uh, you know. Version 0.84 come out. Um, sugar's new. Sugar's got lots of bugs. Sugar's got lots of things that need improving. Um, it's not finished. Um, and and some of what we've done with sugar we haven't uh, proved, but we've been doing field studies for with sugar from the very beginning. Put it in the hands of, of kids and, and teachers all around the world. 
um, looking at how they use it, getting feedback from them. And, uh, and also, one of the neat things that's starting to happen is that the community itself is starting to make th their own modifications to sugar. They're not waiting for us to do it for them. No, we don't, we don't, and uh, so there's something for you to do. Um, why don't you do those tests? Okay, what, what we do have is we have, we have a more, we, we have, you know, a, a different kind of test. We've got, you know, three quarters of a million kids using this and learning and measuring against a different kind of metric, not measuring is the, you know, is, you know, a right mouse click better than a left mouse click, rather we're, we're learning, are they learning, you know, so they're, they're, we're testing it at a different level. The, the, there are lots of, of details in our implementation that are clearly wrong, okay, and, and we need more testing and we need people like you to help us assess through a lot of that, but the overall program is working, kids are learning, kids are changing, kids are making things, teachers are engaged, and um, that's hard to argue with, okay? Now, again, you know, you can, you can say that there are lots of different factors why those kids in Peru changed, and, you know, there's Hawthorne effects, there's all sorts of stuff that's going on out there, but, um, you know, the bottom line is that, um, you know, we, we can, I, I spent 40 years in academia making things, doing little pilot experiments, trying things, and you know what? I saw out in the world nothing happening. And so it was, you know, saying, wait a second, we know we can do better than that. So this, Sugar is saying we know we can do better and we're going to put it out there, but we also know we, we don't have all the answers ourselves and, and we, we don't have the, the resources to test every aspect of everything. That's one of the reasons why we made it into a community project. That's one of the reasons why we made it so that it can be forked. That's one of the reasons why we have a, a, a very, why we engage a community that's all about critique. We engage a community that's going to beat up on us so that we learn and so that things change and so the kids learn and they change and that they get some of that culture. And my time is up. So I'll come out to the back or wherever to, to continue the discussion. Thank you.